Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the JPS podcast. As you know, here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, we like to highlight what's new out there. So here we have another two articles from the journal Pediatric Surgery. These articles are from the September issue of the JPS. And as a reminder, every month, one of the JPS editors help us choose these articles to highlight what's important out there. This month was Dr. With Halkem. Yeah, so the I picked articles that I thought had clinical significance and clinical questions that seem to come about in, in a relatively busy pediatric surgery practice. Okay, great. I'm Cecilia Higena. I'm M. Tom Bash. We are research fellows from Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. So to start this week, we have the first paper. It's about the management of intravascular thrombus in cases of bilateral Wilms tumor or a harsh kidney. Remember, if you are in the state current app, you can see the infographic for this article linked below. And we have another paper about indesigning green-guided nephron sparing surgery for pediatric renal tumors. So let's start. Our first paper is from San Jude Children's Research Hospital, Management of Intravascular Thrombus in Cases of Bilateral Limbs Tumor or Horseshoe Kidney. The purpose of this paper is to describe the oncologic and surgical management of bilateral Wilms tumor or Wilms tumor arising in a horseshoe kidney with intravenous tumor thrombus to help pediatric surgeons. I thought it would be good to highlight because if you're a practicing pediatric surgeon and you have such a patient, then this would be a good article to obviously to read. That was Dr. Whit Halcom, a JPS editor that helped us choose the articles for today. We talked with the senior author. He is a pediatric surgeon at San Jude Children's Research Hospital. My name is Andrew Murphy. I'm a pediatric surgeon at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I always used to think that if you have venous tumor thrombus related to a Wilms tumor, that that would require a radical nephrourectomy on that side. And so just that concept is why I started looking into it. I just, I thought that it was, um, it was just something that I didn't expect to be possible that turned out to be something that's very feasible to do. And this is a single institution retrospective study. They had four bilateral Wilms tumor cases and one case of Wilms tumor arising in a horseshoe kidney with intravenous tumor thrombus. All patients had 12 weeks of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And Christine, actinomycin D, and doxorubicin. Of five patients, four underwent nephron sparing surgery of all tumors, and one underwent unilateral vertical nephroureterectomy with contralateral nephron sparing surgery. When you're dealing with these patients, we found it helpful to stage the procedures. So you can do that one of two ways. You can do the easy side first, give the patient time to recover, and then come back and and see if nephron sparing surgery is going to be feasible on the side with the thrombus. Or if you think after six or 12 weeks of chemotherapy that you're going to have to perform a radical nephrectomy, you can do that on the side, do the cable thrombectomy, close, and then come back and do nephron sparing on, on the residual side. As a reminder, he was Dr. Murphy, one of the authors of this paper. And what happened to this patient's M? Three patients develop medically managed stage 2 or 3 chronic kidney disease, and no patient required renal replacement therapy or kidney transplant to date. And the authors found that nephron sparing surgery is feasible and safe to perform in selected cases of bilateral Wilms tumor with intravascular thrombus by utilizing three drugs neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Actually, it's an interesting paper that it, these are rare to have bilateral wombs with also thrombus, intravascular thrombus. And so the question is, uh oh, now what do I do? You know, usually you have intravascular thrombus, you do a nephrectomy, but now you can't really do a bilateral nephrectomy. So what do you do? So this is basically saying you can still do some element of nephron sparing, either unilateral or bilateral nephron sparing, and still remove the thrombus with good outcomes. Okay, great. Remember, if you are in the state current app, you can see the infographic for this article linked below. And now we are jumping to the next one. 
Well, it's called ICG nephron sparing for pediatric renal tumors. They examine the feasibility of ICG in guiding nephron sparing surgery for pediatric renal tumors. And to discuss this article, we also have one of the authors. Hi, my name is Hafiz Abdel Hafiz. I'm a pediatric oncology surgeon at St. Jude uh, Children's Hospital uh, and the director of uh, Global uh, Surgery Program. And he told us why he investigated on this. Uh, and so fluorescent guidance seemed to be a very logical step to be, to be utilized uh, in that endeavor because, you know, then you, you have this real time visualization of the tumor. I think the wave of the future is to use endocyanine green or compounds like that for safety and of resecting masses or even identifying an anatomy. And that was Dr. With Halkin, the editor that helped us choose these articles. So going back to the paper, they presented eight patients with 12 kidneys with tumor, meaning four of them had bilateral tumors. And even most of them were worms, not all of them had this histology. What they did is they injected the ICD one day before, and we have the author of this paper telling us why. Given the, the ICD at least 24 hours before the surgery, maximizes the chance or optimizes the tumor vis visualization because essentially this gives enough time. But something important is that when they did go into surgery, they found something different than what they expected. The opposite effect was found. The healthy kidney lit up with green and the unhealthy kidney did not light up. Exactly. It's what they call an inverse pattern. And every nephron sparing was successful, but the margins were the same as before without ICG. So we are not there yet, but I think ICG will become the standard of care. For this type of tumors. All right, so yet one more application of ICG that we're finding is helping us with uh, image guided surgery. And it seems like this is probably early because it's feasible, but it didn't seem to have any improvement from not using ICG. So it was proof of concept, it worked, but it didn't yet offer a benefit. But probably my guess is it will in the future as we get better. Yes, I think. The future is for specific targeting. It's sort of specific to the cellular, you know, uh, level of targeting specific surface entity or you know or receptors. So that's that is the next step. And obviously, we're doing preclinical work, but you know, hoping to um, uh, collaborate in some clinical work uh, in the near future. Perfect. So there you have it. Another episode of the JPS podcast brought to you by Cincinnati Children's Hospital. As a reminder, we first talked about the bilateral Wilms tumor or Wilms tumor in a horseshoe kidney with intravenous thrombus and how nephron sparing surgery is feasible and can help the outcomes of those rare but complicated patients. And then we have the second paper that also talk about nephron sparing and using ICG to help us differentiate the tumor from the normal kidney. So if you like this, leave us a writing or a review in Spotify or Apple Podcast, wherever you're listening. And if you want to see more, you can go to Stay Current App. But until then, I'm Cecilia Higena. I'm M. Tombesh. And this is Stay Current Podcast.